All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the trigonometry of special right triangles. And that is the, at the bottom of the second page of your guided notes. So let's zoom in on that part. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna to need to remember what the relationships are in the special right triangles between the sides. So remember, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. My drawings are always terrible. And the relationships there are x, x, and x root two. And then we have the 30, 60, 90 triangle, whose relationships are x, x square root three, and two x. All right, so remember that it's the sine, cosine, and tangent, those are ratios of sides in a right triangle. And we have two right triangles here. So whenever I go to do the sine, or the cosine, or the tangent of anything, we're gonna use these right triangles. So let's see how this works. So we're gonna do the first one here. I'm gonna do the first maybe one or two with you, and then I'm gonna ask you to pause the video, like fill out the table, and then unpause it to check your answers. All right, so the sine of 30, we need to find a 30 degree angle. And a 30 degree angle is right here in the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And when we look at that right triangle, the opposite side there is x, and the hypotenuse is 2x. So what we end up with is a fraction where x's can cancel. And that would give me 1 half. That means that no matter how big the right triangle is, as long as the angles are 30, 60, and 90, the sine of that 30 degree angle will always be 1 half. So let's do the sine of 45. So the sine of 45, again, we find a 45 degree angle, which will be in this triangle. Sine, again, is opposite of hypotenuse. So the opposite side is x, and the hypotenuse is x root 2. That, again, cancels. And we end up with 1 over square root 2. Now, anytime you have a square root in the bottom of this, we're going to rationalize it. Remember to get the square root out of the bottom because it helps with looking at patterns later on. So I want to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. And that would give me the square root of 2 over 2. I could do the sine of 60 in the same way, cosine, tangent, but I'm going to leave those for you to do. So pause the video right now, fill out the table, and then unpause it, and I will give you the answers. And here are the results you should have gotten. Again, notice the sine of 30 and the cosine of 60 are the same because 30 and 60 are complementary. Cosine of 30 and sine of 60, same thing. Sine of 45, cosine of 45, same thing. You will need to know some of these values. We're gonna, next year, we're gonna be required to memorize them. This year, we're just gonna be using them. Just for the purposes of memorizing, if we ever get, when you ever get to that point, though, just notice there's a nice little pattern that happens in the sines and the cosines. You see how the success is one half, and then square root of two over two, and then square root of three over two. If you were to think of one half as the square root of one, over two, then this follows a pattern. Square root one over two, square root two over two, square root three over two. And the cosines do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. 